Hi everyone, welcome back to Garden on the Moors. Today we need to sow some more vegetables, so we need to do some successional sowings of peas and also sow some more tender crops like courgettes and things like that ready for the summer. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. And yeah, enjoy! So here are the peas that we sowed about a month ago, you might have seen on the earlier video. Uh, they're doing really well and now it's time to sow the next half of the row so that we can then try and extend the season. So just like before we've got Kelved and Wonder peas which are saved seed from previous years um, and I'm just going to plant them with my little dibber and about the length of that apart that worked last time. I also need to try and avoid damaging any of this plant here. This is Solomon's seal. Um, I didn't actually plant it, it just popped up. Um, but I love it, so I'm trying to keep it. But it does try and creep into the uh, into the veg patch. So let's get some peas in. Now I'm going to start off just after these ones. So dig a little hole and pop the pea down there. And then just go about that length apart and pop them in and just carry on like that. Now if not all of them germinate that's that's fine I can always fill them in but what you'll probably notice if you look at the row here is some of them don't germinate but actually their neighbours have um, and so their neighbours will just fill in the gap um, so it doesn't really matter too much that they, it's not 100% germination. And what we'll do is probably end up freezing a lot of these and having them when we actually want them. Um, but a lot of them will be eaten fresh off the plant because that's when they're they're sweetest they lose their flavor pretty much the moment you pick them they start losing their flavor um, which is why growing your own is so much worth it so I'm just going to go along this line and I'll go and do the same on the other side and you can see behind the peas the garlic has done incredibly well I can't believe how good a job it's doing at growing. Um, the reason why I know it's doing well is because the leaves are lovely and green and the stems are nice and thick and juicy, which hopefully means thick and juicy bulbs. They will probably be ready in another month or two's time really, when we start to see the leaves yellow like a natural natural yellowing of the leaves that's when we'll know that they're ready to um, pull up and dry out to store so hopefully we can show you that when we get to it Oop. so that's one line done just to try and avoid the vegetables and the pea sticks and do the next line The branches I've got here are supports for the peas because they're climbing plants which means that they need something to climb up, they can't just support themselves. And we're very lucky to have lots of trees around the garden and all of these sticks have come from those trees. So a lot of them are from prunings, uh, some of them are from a storm damaged tree that we had over winter. Um, and what I do is just keep the ones at the right length with lots of sort of squiggly branches coming off them which are going to give the peas as much support as possible and let them branch out and bush out to grow. Lovely. 
Now those I will water because they're dried out peas and they're going to need a bit of a boost to get going. But once they've had their initial water, unless it's particularly dry, I'll leave them to it. Just going to put this little fence up again, which just keeps the dog and when the chickens can come out, keeps them off of it as well. And although the chickens aren't allowed out yet, it's still useful to have these in place because ideally you want stuff like fencing and support oops, to be in place before the plants grow up so that they then kind of grow around it and it looks more, you know, natural. Um, rather than forced. So that is peas done for the year. Just gotta wait to eat them now, which will be delish. So we're going to also sow some carrots today. This is the variety I'm growing. It's called Early Nantes 2. I can't say you pronounce it, or Nantes, I'm not sure. Uh, on the back it says, in bold writing, easy to grow, ideal for children. So if we can't grow these, then something's going wrong. But of course, I guarantee this is going to be the one crop that fails. So with that in mind, let's just plant them and see what happens. So first things first, I need to measure out where I'm going to plant them. I don't know if you can see, but our potatoes are up. Here's one. And another. And another. And another just there. And there's one up top there. So I know where we pot potatoes are coming up. Also, we've got these red onions, which are also sprouting up lovely job as well. I want them to be nearer the onions and the potatoes because they're going to grow out. So I'm going to risk it. It says in the packet 30 centimetres. I'm going to risk it for about 20, 25 from the onions, which I think will be enough, he says, because the potatoes will fill out a lot. So I've got my little tape measure there. I think 20 will be all right. You've got to try these things. And I'll just get my wire, well not wire, guideline. And I think I said 20, didn't I? So it's 20 from there. A generous 20. Just there. Make it nice and tight. Now carrots don't want to be deep. They like it shallow, so they can keep warm. Hello, right, mate. So, I just need to very gently, so it's right on the ground now. Okay, I've got my trowel, and I'm gonna use this to make a very shallow drill. So I'm just gonna part the soil. Like I said, it really doesn't need to be deep. I've just gotta kind of stand funny to avoid all of the veg. But once it's in, I don't really aim to do much with it. You can thin carrots, which some people like to do, um, but that really does encourage um, carrot root fly, any disturbance. So I really, ideally, don't want to disturb them until it's time to just dig them up. Um, I will be using fleece, uh, not fleece, sorry, netting to protect them, but prevention is f way better than cure so if i can prevent the carrot fly from even thinking about it all the better lovely so just like i said just a very shallow drill that's all they want they really really don't want to be deep so i'm just going to shake out my little seeds try and get them in the bottom corner And then as thinly as I can, because they are really thin seeds anyways. Very thinly try and sprinkle them 
in the drill as evenly as I can. They all won't, they won't all germinate, I don't expect. I can save some back and I can sow them again later in the year. Because like I said, they won't all germinate. Some of them will get damaged and they'll pretty much just push each other out of the way anyways. Now what you can probably notice is the colour of the compost is nice and dark brown where I've dug it, which wasn't deep. So it just shows you that this soil is holding moisture. So that is ideal. So carrots definitely won't need watering once they get going, unless it's dry, unless it's really dry. Um, which doesn't often happen in Cornwall. Uh, if anyone's had holiday in Cornwall, they probably know that it usually rains quite a lot, which is good for growing stuff. So that's them all in. I've got hundreds of seeds left. So I'll probably sow some more later in the year and possibly even have some for next year. So now that our seeds are in, we just got to cover them over without trying to mess up the line because it would be nice if they're all in a straight line just because that makes it easier to weed and when they come up I'll know uh, a bit like these onions here those little silver skin onions no weeds are going to come up in a straight line like that so we know that they are the onions <laughs> even if we lose the label the ground, this ground is lovely and warm, which will help germinate the carrots. That's why I didn't sow them when I sowed the other vegetables. I want the ground to be a bit warmer so they don't just sit there and rot. They will hopefully crack on as quick as you like. Right, lovely job, that's them done. So like I said, all they need now is a water. I'm gonna keep that guideline in just so I know where they are for the meantime. And yeah, that's them. Next thing we need to sow are the uh, courgettes, squash and pumpkins. So uh, it's the end of April now, coming towards the end of April anyways, and these vegetables that I'm going to sow now, they can't go out in any frost. If they get a bit of frost them, that's it, they're wiped out, they're dead, they're done. So I really don't want that, which is why I'm sowing them now, so that hopefully by the time that they're ready to go out, they actually can go out, because it will be by the end of May, beginning of June which is when we stop getting frosts. Okay, so these are the courgettes and squash and things we're gonna grow. Um, first up, we've got the piccolo, which is a, we cut it as a courgette rather than keep it to a marrow size. Absolutely loved this one last year. It was brilliant for us. So we're growing that one again. We've got this one called Gold Mine. Uh, like the last one, this is an F1 hybrid. So it's a first generation hybrid. Um, that's absolutely fine. We won't keep the seeds. We just buy fresh every year. So we've got gold mine for some nice yellow uh, courgettes. Then we've got, oh my goodness me, corkazelle for a stripey courgette. Um, haven't tried this one before, but yeah, I just like to have a variety to mix it up. We've got pumpkins, evergold. Um, I'm going to actually probably plant these down in Brandon's grandparents' garden because um, they've got more space and we can just plant them and they'll just be able to do their own thing. We don't need to keep constantly having to, you know, harvest and things like that. Uh, we've got a one called Winter Buffy Ball. This, I think, is like a small pumpkin looking squash, which I'm hoping will be nice for us to have during the winter and store it and keep it over winter. That's the plan anyways. Haven't tried it before, but We've got to try new things, isn't it? So, And then last but not least is Courgette Larea. Um, so these are apparently white straight fruit with a sweet and delicate taste. Perfect for cooking in a variety of dishes. Ideal, that's exactly what we want it for. So we're going to grow them as well. For the courgettes, I only want, uh, ideally, I want 
two of each. Um, I don't want hundreds, but we do want a lot. We do like a courgette, so, and I want a variety of things. So we're going to aim for two of each. So I'm going to sew three of each and keep this best two. And that's if there are two, you know, they don't always germinate. And then things like the pumpkins, I'm probably going to sew, so I'm probably going to sew quite a few. Um, I'll aim for about six. Um, and then we'll just give them to family and friends of young kids and stuff like that. So that'd be the plan for them. Now then, to sew them is pretty much like everything else. I've got, although I'm obviously starting off with a big pot because these are going to be very big plants and they don't mess about. They start off pretty big, to be honest. Fill it with some peat-free compost, as always. And then I just need to get one of my seeds. Which are loose in the pack. Just going to get one of them. And then sew it on its side. Bless you. I'm just going to sew it on its side. Like that. And then tuck him in, so it's nice and cosy. Pop a label in him and give him some water and all the rest will be just the same as that. And there we have it. All the courgettes and pumpkins and squash are sewed. I even had some room left over to sow some runner beans, coriander and lettuce. Uh, the runner beans will go down Brand's grandparents' garden and the lettuce and coriander are just because I had some spare, um, some free seeds come through and some spare compost, so figured might as well. So here's the state of play in the greenhouse. There we are. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a big thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers. <laughs>